Okay. Biodiversity data. So, fundamental. We need the data records to place a given taxonomy, uh, a given taxon at a given time in a particular place. Only recently, uh, the, this uh, primary data has been available uh, in digital formats, like uh, in a Broadway. Uh, and also, uh, only recently, uh, this type of data has been openly shared, uh, so open access. So, uh, according to, you know, to the bibliography, there are like more than one billion data records available online. And so, Tao, uh, two days ago, talk, uh, talked about like the leaks in the digital accessible knowledge. And, uh, and also what he means by, by what he means by DAC is a set of primary data that has been made both digital and accessible in global standard formats. And so uh, making a, a, a close analysis of the DA key for the Brazilian plants and uh, with all this this effort of developing the species link network and the, the Brazilian virtual herbarium. And I think now we are starting to get like a critical mass of data uh, to, to make analysis to support policy making. Uh, for example, more than 90% of the Brazilian angiosperm sper sperm, uh, species listed in the list of species of the Brazilian flora that, that was a major enterprise, are currently served by species link. Uh, and so now in this, you know, species link, my, but like a national Brazilian, the National Virtual Institute, uh, Virtual Institute of Brazil, we have like a more than the 90 herbaria serving data. Uh, the analysis uh, that uh, was done by then, uh, tooking, looking at uh, the angiosperms, okay, for all the angiosperm species, what's the number of angiosperms that has less than, uh, that, that have, has no records, no records. They are listed in the, they are, they are listed in the, 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 the list of Brazilian plants, but uh, there is no record about those names in the Brazilian herbaria. It's less than 10%. Seems a lot, but I think it's a good, it's a fairly good number. And then, uh, you know, like the, the number of uh, species that has between one to five records, number of species that has between five to 20 records, and uh, uh, number of species that have more than 20 records. And so here, like I think like, with this number of records, I understand that you can make a quite good analysis, or fairly good, at least for the ones that have. Uh, Tao, you, you, you interrupt me or? <laughs> okay, Tao. Do you want to? More is always better. Okay. And uh, sometimes 20 is enough, and sometimes 1,000 is not enough. But, mm. but yeah. You know. Okay. As we'll be asking for your <laughs> comments, okay. continuously, you stay. <laughs> so she has, doesn't have to, to be moving. Okay. Okay, so basically, uh, last year, Tom was in Brazil, and for three months, less than three months, four months, wow. Uh, went quick, and uh, he was working like mad with uh, you know the postdocs at Korea, and uh, basically they started like the preparation of four papers. Uh, two of them were accepted for publication, and uh, two of them are still being uh, being prepared. I'm going to talk about like the first one, the first paper, 
is uh, completeness of digital accessible knowledge of plants of Brazil and priorities for survey and inventory. This was published in, this was accepted to, pub, to be published in diverse and distribution. Just a fun comment. Okay. The editor has now returned that manuscript to us three times on the basis that it needs to be edited and reviewed carefully by, get this, a native English speaker. <laughs> <laughs> See, the, the thing is, uh, the main author is Brazilian. <laughs> so, that's a kind of prejudice. <laughs> Anyhow, okay, methods. Methods, okay, data from species link network accessed in May last year. And, uh, and so, this, uh, this data by was uh, the last year, I think, uh, we had uh, two point, we had like... These are angiosperms from Brazil that have a yeah. domain. Angiosperms, yes. And you get a two and a half million records. Yes. And then the second step down. So then the second step is we require that it has some sort of geographic reference. In some cases, longitude point. And in other cases, it's simply the name of the county in Brazil. So mm -hmm. fairly small, although they get big in the west and the north. But between these two, you get some sort of geographic reference. And we needed a full day, month, year collection date. And that left us 1.68 million. So look at this. Just in asking for a complete date and some sort of georeference, we have a leakage of 750,000 records. That's what we were talking about the other day. Okay, that's a journal with a fairly good impact rate on 6.1. So good. That's why they need a. I made a big <laughs> Okay. Somebody was asking about gap analysis. Yes. This is an example of gap analysis. That was you, John? Okay. So essentially what we're doing here is we're asking which areas have in some sense not been sampled or not been sampled enough. Okay? So we're defining areas in terms of spatial gaps but we're also identifying gaps in terms of environments. So you might have a very unique environment that's only represented in a very small area. And if you just did a random <coughs> sample across your country, you might miss those environments. So we want to look in geographic sense and we want to look in environmental sense. Next. Okay, here is all these calculations. You want to say anything about that? Because I won't. <laughs> so th this is a, a very simple approach to asking how complete is an inventory of some set of entities in a place. Okay? And it's essentially the idea of if I go out, you know, maybe I, I, I'm looking at bird species out here in Kirsten Bush. And maybe I go out every day for a month. If I, if I were to go out every day for a month, and if I knew South African birds, and I literally every day see the same three species, after a month, I'm going to be pretty convinced that there are only three species out there. Right? But if each day I go out, and I see another new species, and the next day I see another new species. And over and over and over again, I go out, I see some of the original species, and I see some new species. My guess is that there are a lot of them out there. So there's a body of theory by uh, a statistician named Lin Chow. And essentially what she's done is looked at the frequency of detection of species. 
And essentially, if you have lots of species that have been detected only once in that data matrix of occurrences versus sampling, well, if you have lots of species that have been seen only once, then that should push you towards imagining that there are lots of species that haven't been seen at all. So all this, and this has a, a couple major papers behind it, deriving it, but essentially all this is doing is saying your expected true number of species in your inventory depends on how many species you've already observed, and then this other term is the number of species you haven't observed, the ones that have been seen zero times. And it is the square of the number of species that have been seen once divided by twice the number of species that have been seen twice. And he, Chow Xi actually explored including the information from species that have been seen three times and more but found that really most all of the behavior of this index derives from the one-time views and the two-time views. So the, the value of this indicator is that it's really, really simple and easy to use, but also has shown pretty good performance. We needed it to be really simple and easy to use because as you'll see in a minute, we applied it to hundreds of thousands of pixels across Brazil. Okay, and it wasn't feasible to do massive, massive calculations. So then, you're interested in how complete is your inventory. Well, these are the species you know from the place, and these are the species that you calculate, that you, that you expect to be there. So we can d develop an, in an index to inventory completeness just as the proportion of the expected species that have actually been observed. Very, very simple, okay? But so, useful. So species observed in three consecutive days would not enter that formula? They don't go into that formula except, go back, except that they add to the total of Observe. species observed. Got it. Okay? But in, in this term, which is your guesstimate of how many species should be there, should be there that you haven't seen yet, that term doesn't pay attention to the, the, the tertiary species. Okay? There's another whole series of papers is, is um, which, um, which looks at the question, question how many words did Shakespeare know? Yes. Yes. <laughs> and and, and he counts the number of words he used and how many more words really that he didn't use. Yeah. And, and, um, um, and it's funny how these things get invented in different parts but they never get, get brought together. But that was a... Um, no, that was done 20, 30 years ago. And, um, and probably this person now has reinvented a wheel that was invented uh, uh, a long time ago. No, th this person was referring to that work. Okay. Um, and the Chow work was done in the 80s. But that Shakespeare example is excellent because I think what it comes down to is you had some board statisticians. And so they typed all of Shakespeare's sonnets into the computer and just looked at the frequency of words. And sonnets are very nice because they have a very standard format, right? Length, number of words, number of syllables. And so they had done this just as, a, as an exercise, just for fun. And then a sonnet was discovered that was putatively by Shakespeare and they literally published a paper in Science testing the hypothesis that this sonnet could have been by Shakespeare. And if I remember right, they were unable to reject the hypothesis that Shakespeare had written it, if I remember right. Yes, so that, that little bit of, um, um, doesn't depend on the number of lists that have been made was as more lists are made then um, A and B get smaller. Yes. So, uh, so it kind of self-compensates for the number of... Uh, well, again, Im imagine I go out and sample Kirstenbosch 10 times or 100 times or 1,000 times. 
provide, forget about seasonality and migration and anything like that. After a thousand times, I'm much more likely to be done with my inventory than after ten. Yeah, but when you go a thousand times, then you expect very few species to be on your list either once or twice. Yes, you're quite correct. You get some instability because not only do the real singletons empty out, but also the doubletons. So yes, you're quite correct. Essentially, you can imagine as a species gets detected, it's going from zero detections to one to two to three. And when it gets to three, it no longer participates in that term. But the idea of this index is the contribution of those tertiary species to, to informing us about the zero category is quite trivial. Any, anyhow, we can, we can discuss that. Maybe I don't pay sufficiently attention. When do you consider that the species is observed? When do we consider that, that the species is observed? That depends on the taxon and the circumstances. You know, sometimes when I go out into the field, it's a specimen of the bird. In other cases, it may be an observation or even a, a, an oral record. In entomology, it may be falling into a trap. You know, what have you? It, that depends on the taxon. Okay. What we're after is a a record that is identifiable, okay? And so, so essentially, you don't even really need a Latin binomial. You just need to know that it falls into class A or class B or class C, et cetera, et cetera. Let's, let's keep moving because Jorge is going to be waiting for us fairly soon for a conversation. Okay, então, you're continuing. Or he's going to join us three third or four? Four third. So we're supposed to watch a movie before that. Yeah. Okay. So let's keep moving. Nope. Nope. Okay. 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 So then what we did was we took Brazil and we divided it up into a lot of little pieces. Probably Mariani didn't worry about showing you this, but we started by looking at completeness by state. And then we moved on to really big fat pixels, which are obviously going to tend to be relatively well characterized because they're big. We have more records. And then we made those smaller and made those smaller. This is kind of a middle level resolution. But what you're seeing is a gradient from blue, which is low C, low completeness. So maybe we're estimating that there are 100 species of plants, but we've only observed 10. Up to red, which is well known. And so there, maybe we're estimating there are 100 species, and we've observed 95 of them. And so, focus your eyes on this, where you see gaps, that's simply where there's no information. <laughs> okay? Just that should be pretty scary, because yeah. that's a big area. Big area. But then also, look for spatial pattern in blue versus red. Look at all this interior, and essentially everything out no. here, it's blue. With spots here and there. But then the eastern seaboard of Brazil, and particularly the southern half, tends to be pretty well known. So that actually mimics what? The geographic distribution of botanists, mm -hmm. right? And academic institutions. Roads. Roads also. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. This is kind of fun, giving a talk where you don't know what comes next. <laughs> Okay, so that last slide, let me, let me see. Let's see. Then just click in the white. Mm -hmm. Click anywhere. 